I'm going to try it with this. It feels very weird. <laughs> um, and this is very new to me, but bear with me. So, before we start, there's two things I want to say. Um, first of all, I have for a long time, because it's a long time since Matt asked me if I wanted to do this, um, known that I wanted to talk something about um, God's presence and therefore prayer. Um, so that has been on my heart for a long time. And it's not because, trust me, it really isn't because I've got it sussed, because I really, really don't. Um, it's more because it's a journey I want to be on more. I want to grow in my prayer. I want to grow in God's presence in my life. So this morning I am as much talking to myself as I am talking to you guys. <laughs> um, that was the first thing. The second thing, even though I've known I've talk, wanted to talk about this for a long time, me being me, um, very much last minute person, um, I really only started preparing properly for this on Friday. Um, so I had all of yesterday, Friday and all of yesterday for it. Um, and I've had a lot of thoughts and I've been praying a lot about it. So right, it seems, to me it seems like a lot of scattered thoughts. So what I wanted to say is if this comes together as a meaningful understandable, flowing talk. It is definitely not because of me. It is definitely because of God. If it comes out as just a scattering of thoughts that doesn't really make sense and that doesn't really have any flow to it, then it's all on me. <laughs> That's the caveats, two caveats I want to give this morning. Um, and I want to talk about prayer and God's presence. Um, and a lot of what I'm going to say, as I've already said, is based on this book, How to Pray, by Pete Gregg. It's a really, really good book. I reread it in preparation for this. Um, and I would encourage you to read it if you, in any way, shape, or form, struggle with prayer, like I have done over the years. I've been a Christian all my life, and I still find it difficult to pray sometimes. It's not something I have sussed by any means. But I have found this prayer book really good. It's very simple in its approach and it's very, um, it makes it very real and very uh, doable. <laughs> um, I do say as well, if you do read it, then um, you will recognize what a lot of what I'm saying, so bear with me in that as well. Um, and one of the things about prayer is, I think everybody regardless of whether they believe or not, has probably at some point in their life prayed. They might not have recognized it as prayer, um, but I'm pretty sure everybody has at some point prayed when they're in a situation that is desperate and that just, help! <laughs> um, or, I don't know where to go with this. It's a prayer. It's a shout out for something bigger than yourself that can help, that can come to you. And that is, at the very, very basic, what prayer is. However, we also know as Christians that prayer is so much more than that. Because prayer is, is our relationship with God, our Father, with Jesus, our brother and saviour, and with the Holy Spirit. It is that intimate connection that we have with a God that is almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing. Um, yeah, I still, whenever I hear anything about our cosmos and how many universes there are, oh, sorry, how many um, galaxies there are in our universe, it stuns me. I can't get my head around. I think last I saw it was something like 10 billion galaxies or something they've found. And just 10 billion in itself is unbelievable. 10 billion galaxies, that's like planets and solar systems and all of it, all together. And, <coughs> and that God wants to have an intimate, close relationship with me. I can't get my head around that. 
But he has given us prayer to to build that relationship, to grow that relationship, to be in that relationship. And um, in that... Um, so when we... When we think about prayer, we often do think about it in that sort of traditional way of asking or let's pray. And we all sort of go to that default setting of sort of it being very still or very um, of this specific thing we do at a specific time. When actually in the Bible, um, in. I've got to find my notes now. In 1 um, Thessalonians 5, verse 16 and 17, there are two of the very, very shortest prayer, uh, verses in the Bible. The first one says, Rejoice always, that's the verse in the Bible, and pray continually, that's the second, that's verse um, 17. We are taught to pray continually, to always be in prayer, and I, whenever I hear that, and I've always found it difficult sometimes, I'm thinking, I can't sit there with my head bowed praying 24-7 because God's not called me to... It, it, I need to do more than that. That's, that's not a life. That's just a part of, of what I do as a Christian. So we need to find a way of being praying continually and at the same time living a life that is... Um, serving God, that is serving our neighbor, serving our community, that is loving our neighbor, um, that is um, doing as well as just sitting there being. So I want to, the first thing I want to do is, is challenge us to think broader about prayer than just that sort of time when we sit with our heads bowed and our hands folded. Prayer is what we've been doing this morning in our worship. That is an expression of prayer because that is us in a relationship with our God, in a relationship where we are giving him praise. We are honor him as God our Father, giving him glory as God our Savior, asking him to come and meet with us in his Holy Spirit. And that is prayer. When we meet together, when we praise, when we worship, that is prayer. It is also... um, I'm not much of an athletic, but I do know people who are, who find it very difficult to sit still for very long periods of time and get very fidgety. And for them, prayer can be going out for a run, doing a dance, doing something physical that um, helps you to express some of the joy that you have of knowing God or some of the frustrations you can have in a situation that you're in. It's like, God! <laughs> I don't get this. I want to be physical about this. Um, And that is prayer as well. That is God listening to us, being in connection with us, being in that relationship, communicating with us, and being that intimate with us. And he wants us to be that close and intimate. He has called us to be his children. Um, And that's amazing. And... When I think of my own relationship with my parents, um, I, I know when I was growing up especially, they wanted to know what was happening in my life. They wanted to talk with me. They wanted to connect with me. They wanted to um, yeah, know every, every little aspect of my life. They probably still do. I'm not so good at sharing all that with them. But um, I know that When we are in a relationship, um, I have friends that I don't see very often because they live in another country, but when I do get with them, we are like this, straight away. We know each other really deep, really intimately because we have a long history together, and those relationships are great. However, I don't share my everyday life with them. Um, My parents, as I said, I talk with my parents um, every Sunday evening. It's... um, thing we've had to set up to get organized because otherwise I would hardly ever see them living in another country from them. Um, And 
I talk with my parents about some things. I talk with them a lot about my everyday stuff. I don't go particularly deep with my parents because that's not the sort of relationship I have with them. Um, whereas the other friends I don't see very often, I can actually sometimes go really deep because we don't have that everyday stuff to connect with. But God wants both. He wants that deep, intimate relationship where I can share some of the really difficult things with him, but also the relationship where I can share my everyday life, where I can go through, well, this is, this is how my week has been, this is what's happened. And he wants both. He wants the, the time I set aside to really talk and to really be with him, to really dwell in his presence. And he wants the every day I get up in the morning, I've got a busy day, Lord, please help me to get this um, assignment done in time, or please, I'm driving around trying to find a car park, please help me to find a car park. Um, he wants that everyday stuff, and he wants to be really deep and intimate. And in order to give him both, I need to set aside time for both. And I think that is um, what it's referring to about praying continuously. It's about being aware always of being in that relationship with God. Um, even though I don't see my parents every day, I'm still in a relationship with them. I'm still their daughter. I'll always be their daughter, even when I don't see them that often. Um, and it's the same with God. I am still his child, even if I not very good always at setting aside time for him or being in his presence. But every time I does, he rejoices. He is so pleased to see me. He is so happy that I have made the time and he longs for that every single day. And I need to get better at that, um, at setting aside that time um, for being in his presence and for being continually praying in that I am continually in his relationship, in his presence, and I can send up those prayers of, oh, somebody just shared with me that they are, their daughter is sick or something. I can pray for that. And I can pray there and then because I'm in the relationship with Jesus there and then. Um, I am jumping all over my notes, but that's okay. I think it's making sense, or at least I hope it is. <laughs> um, When we, we, we are called to pray on our own as well. Um, and at the beginning, well, before Jesus um, introduces the Lord's Prayer in Matthew um, chapter 6, he, he's teaching his disciples, the disciples of how to pray. And he's telling them, go to your room, close the door, do it in hiding. And the God who sees the hidden, will meet with you there. He will come and be with you in the quietness. And then Jesus does something that seems slightly odd. He then teaches them how to pray the Lord's Prayer, which is then he's just told us to go into the room on our own, and then he starts the Lord's Prayer with our Father, as if we are praying together. And I think there's a point in that. I think that as a Christian fellowship, yes, we need to have our private time with God. We need to have our moments with um, that intimate relationship where we really sort of, it's just me and God, and it's intimate, it's close, it's personal. But we also need the fellowship to pray together and to remember that when I am in that space on my own, I am still part of a fellowship. I'm still part of a church that um, prays together, and there's real power in us praying together. And I think that's why all through the Lord's Prayer it's our Father. And it, it's a communal thing. It's a fellowship. It's us praying together. And I think there's such a power in that when we come together and we pray together. We bring our praise together to God. And we bring our requests together to God. Um, and we confess together as well to God. One of, one of the prayers in the Lord's Prayer is... Um, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sins against us. And that can be such a hard thing to do, but there is such a freedom in sharing our 
sins and the things we do wrong with each other. Even if, it's not, even if your sin is not necessarily that you hurt somebody else, even if it's something that's just, it puts you in a bad place with God. It helps to share it with somebody else. It helps to put it out in the open, to um, place it before God with somebody else because there's just a, a therapy in, in that sort of confessing. It makes it, it somehow takes it off yourself, I think, in, an, in that sharing it with others. Um, so there is that value in, in praying on your own and praying with others and praising and worshipping and giving thanks and, and confessing as well. Um, sometimes when we are in big prayer meetings, um, I have sometimes heard people who are new to faith who say that they find it difficult to pray in groups with other people. Um, and I can kind of understand why, and I will <laughs> confess, sometimes when I pray, um, I have been guilty of wanting to sound good. <laughs> I have been guilty of uh, sounding, wanting to sound really clever, or actually sometimes even almost wanting to teach as part of my prayer. Um, and I'm sorry about that when I've done that. I'm sorry that it can put others in a situation where they feel they can't pray because I can't sound like her. Um, I've had many years of practice in it, I have to say, and sometimes it's probably more to sound clever than it is actually me trying to have that intimate, close relationship with God. And I need to address that because God really wants us to be real in our prayers. He wants us to be honest he wants that intimate relationship. If I only ever in my relationship with my friends pretend it to be something I'm not, pretend it to be really clever, or pretend it to be really, yeah, I've got all the answers. I know what the right, um, um, what, yeah, what you should do in every situation. They would pretty quickly get tired of spending time with me because I would be an, just annoying to be around. Um, so why am I trying to do that in my prayers? God wants us to be real. He wants us to be honest in our prayers. And that goes both when we're on our own and when we're praying together. And therefore, it doesn't matter um, how our prayers sound or how they come out because God sees our heart and he knows what's on, on our mind. Before we even have the thought of it, God knows he knows us. He knows us intimately. And he knows what's on our heart and mind and what our desires are. But he wants us to express it. And whether we express it really, really well or whether we express it in a bit of a muddle, I mean, sometimes my prayer is, God, I just feel a bit <laughs> today because I don't have any other way of expressing it. And God understands that. And I love the fact that he understands that. And we can be like that in our prayer, both when we are um, praying on our own, but when we're praying in groups as well. Just We don't have to be so elegant. I want to encourage us to allow ourselves to be muddly and fumbling for words, and just because God knows what we have on our hearts, and he longs us to express it. Not because he doesn't know, but because it's, shaping us. It's making me rely on God for what I need. It's, it's shaping me in that um, in that I'm, I'm bringing this vulnerability of myself to God and I'm allowing him and others to see me as vulnerable and that gives, brings me closer to God because it allows him to speak into that situation more clearly because I'm not trying to be something I'm not. He's I'm being me as I am, false and all, in front of God. And he is using that to speak to me. And I think that is, that is so precious. And I want us to encourage us to, to be that honest in our prayers. Because God knows anyway. <laughs> We're not exactly trying to show off to somebody who doesn't know us intimately. Um, who doesn't know that when we're falling short or when we um, 
when we get it right or when we get it wrong. He knows it anyway, so we might as well be honest about it. Um, and I had another thought and it's gone out of my head now. Um, yeah. So when we pray, we, God wants us to be real. He wants us to keep it simple as well because, as I said, <laughs> the elaborate words doesn't make a difference. He knows what's on our heart. He knows what's really going on. And all the words can sometimes muddle it up. So keep it real, keep it simple, and keep it going. Um, I'm not going to dwell too much on that one, but we are called to ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking. Um, Seek and keep on seeking. It's an ongoing thing. Our prayers, yes, we want them to be answered here and now, but sometimes there are various reasons why they're not. Um, And God can either be waiting with the answer because other circumstances need to fall into place, or it might be the answer is no, because God knows better than I do what is right and what is wrong. And um, but we need to be persistent because it helps us to stay humble. It helps us to stay reliant on God for all that we need. Um, so keep it simple, keep it real, and keep it going um, in prayer. As I said, prayer is more than just asking, and we have talked a little bit about asking. Um, One of the things that um, Pete encourages us to do, and some of you will be very familiar with it if you use the um, Lectures 365 app, is the acronym PRAY, which he uses as a sort of reminder of sort of how to build your prayer. Um, He starts with P, which he uses... um, pause and I love the way he he puts it in here he says when we come into prayer um, especially when we want to go deeper in our prayer pausing at the beginning to just recenter our busy lives and recenter my busy thoughts on God um, is a really powerful way of just settling down to rest in God's presence and as he puts it um, to stop being God and let God be God when I pause to be still I mean it's very countercultural. many of us will know we have busy lives we rush from one thing to another there's always things to do and we're really good at busying ourselves as well so even when we don't have things to do we um, watch TV or play on our phone or scan social media or all sorts and we busy our mind because part of us knows that we long for that um, quietness, for that sort of stepping away from the busyness. But we are very good at finding it in the, all the wrong places sometimes. And um, I know I am I'm very guilty of spending far too much time playing on my phone. Um, because it just it helps to distract me, it helps to calm me. And it's not because it's bad on its own, it's when it takes over that it's really bad. But when I come into prayer, my mind can be all over the place. But when I pause to start with, to be still, to just... God, here I am, me as me, and all I do is sit here with you and just being in his presence. And that is enough. In that being, I am still enough. I am still the, the child of God that he has loved, that he has created, that can do his will, that can do his purpose. Even when I'm just sitting and doing nothing for a moment, then just being in God's presence. And if you don't feel comfortable with that, um, or don't find sort of, don't have much experience with it, I'm, 
after the, the talk, I'm going to help sort of take you through a little bit of um, Christian meditation um, using our breath as well for it. And I know that some people will find that a little bit, ooh, isn't that a bit New Age? Isn't that a bit um, uh, Eastern spirituality sort of thing? Well, God has used, has given us breath. It's one of the first um, symbols of the, the, the sort of the most used symbols of the Holy Spirit is the breath of God. And when God created Adam and Eve, He breathed life into them. So the fact that we have breath and we can use that in our prayer time with God. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a very, um, I think that's a God-given thing actually that we can use our breath, our our life, um, to to just recenter our focus on God and to recenter our mind on Him. So after after this, I'm going to sort of lead us into a little bit of time of that. Um, but yeah, to start with in our prayer time, pause. Then we come to the R, which he's used for rejoice. And that's about giving praise to God, <clears throat> recognizing who he is, and, and giving him the glory that he deserves. Because we have been created to give praise. We have been created to give thanks to God, to give him the glory. So pause, rejoice, and then comes the ask, which is often where we start in our prayer time with that long list of God, please, can I have this, 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 and this? And could you be with that situation? And this person needs healing. And over here we need some power in the, for the war in Ukraine and all of the other things that are happening. Um, and as I said, um, when we ask, we can ask God for the big things in our life. But we can ask for the little things, the intimate things. In the Lord's Prayer, we, ask to, uh, we are told to ask for our daily bread, which is both in the sort of the physical sense, our daily food, what we need daily. It's not what we need for the week or for the year or far ahead. It's what I need for the day. But it's also the spiritual um, bread, the, the time with God, the spending time in his word to listen to him, to be in his presence. That's also our daily bread and that's also what we can ask for in that, as well as for praying for others, praying for situations, praying for the world. Um, and that is part, a very important part of prayer as well. And then finishing with yielding the why, or yes, if you want it very much simpler, um, which is about me. I, I've, I've stayed in God's presence. I have given him praise. I have asked him for what I need. And now I need to just surrender myself to him in whatever way um, is appropriate for that day. It might be that I need to confess something that I've done wrong. It might be that I need to just surrender my, my own pride in a situation to God to say, yeah, I know I took pride in that and actually I should have given you glory. It wasn't me, it was you. Or it might be that um, I just surrender myself, just give myself to God and say, here I am, use me, whatever you want me to be. How can, you, how can I be serving you in, in this situation? Or how can I be um, a light of your um, glory in, to this friend? And that's part of the prayer as well. And it sort of brings us back to sort of bringing the glory back to God when we yield to him, when we surrender ourselves to him. Um, and that's, I have found that really helpful when I've been struggling with my own prayer life sometimes. That sort of rhythm of, of pause, rejoice, ask, and yield. Um, I find that really useful. Um, however, there are times in my life when I really struggle to find the words to pray. Uh, when I, 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 I sit there and I'm trying to um, keep my focus on God. I'm trying to uh, just put a sentence together and nothing happens. My mind is all over the place or 
I'm just, there's too much going on, or I just don't have the words. And I'm sitting there just, oh. And at those times, um, the contemplative prayers, which is dwelling in God's presence, can be really helpful. And they don't have to have words. They are often still. Um, and in stillness, I don't necessarily mean sitting still, as I said at the beginning. It might be, actually, your, your stillness with God is going for a run where you can just, the adrenaline is going, but you are there with God, you're running with God, you are in his presence as you're running, um, or dancing, or... <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, or drawing with God, or, yeah, whatever, whatever you're physically doing, it's with God. But it's a time where it's just you and him, and it becomes so intimate. Um, the way they describe it in the book is um, a bit like if you're watching a movie. When you first get into the cinema, you are sitting there, you're trying to focus on the, on the movie, um, you've got your popcorn, you get a bit annoyed with everybody else being a bit noisy and you're trying to get into the story. And that's like the beginning of a contemplative prayer where you're trying, to, when you're sort of trying to still yourself and it's you and God. And sometimes at these times it can be helpful to have a word or a phrase to sort of meditate on. Um, like sometimes I've used just as simple as breathing in Jesus, Jesus. Sometimes it can be a bit more. It can be, yeah, I can use, um, Francis of Assisi used back in, I don't know, hundreds of years ago, um, used the phrase, my God and my all, as a means of just putting yourself in the right perspective with God um, and just breathing that in and out and just spending that time focusing and as you do that more and more, um, well, first of all, you might find that your mind starts wandering when that happens. You get distracted by thoughts that pops in or noise or, oh, yeah, I need to remember to buy that for um, this thing I'm going to later or, yeah, um, I need to remember to pray for this person who told me they aren't were sick or something. And that's all right. When you are in this stage, um, you're mind can wander. It does that. It's natural. Uh, but you can use that time to not let it annoy you or distract you, but just say, all right, this has come to my mind. I will give a quick thanks for God for, oh yeah, I had a really great time with my sister this week. Thank you, God. And then leave it at that and move back to whatever it is you're focusing on. Or it might be a quick prayer for, oh yeah, I need to remember to pray for Auntie Lucy, uh, Lord, just be with her, heal her, touch her, and then come back to whatever it is that you're focusing on. And it can be a means of just sort of managing in some ways your scattered thoughts, letting them be there, but without giving them control of, your, of, of what's happening in your heart and mind. Um, because you are intentionally focusing on that sort of phrase or word that you're sort of meditating for yourself. Um, when, when you've done that for a bit, it can move into a, a stage um, where it becomes more God and you, where you are not the focus, but when actually God starts to become bigger in the focus. If we take the movie analogy, this is when you really start to get into the characters, you get a bit captivated by, um, by the story, you sort of lose track a little bit about what's going on, you forget their actors on this screen because you're really into the story and you really want to know what's happening with them. And that's when your meditation starts to become, um, God starts to feel more and it's you and God and you sort of, he can start to become bigger in your, uh, in your thoughts, in your mind. Um, and if you take it even further, it can become when it actually becomes just God and you can just sit in his presence and just 
just be and it's all about God and you sense him, you feel him it's, um, it's an experience more than it's a sort of intention it's a feeling, it's an emotion in the cinema it's when you are completely lost to the rest of the world and at the end of the movie you sort of halfway go up and say oh, oh yeah <laughs> we are not in Rome in the 15th century something or um, oh yeah <laughs> I need to go out, oh yeah it's still sunshine outside, oh gosh how did that happen um, when you're just completely lost to the world around you and everything that's happening in this is this movie and I know this can sound a bit hocus pocus but I would actually I would guess many of us have actually tried at least some of it before if you have ever been in a worship situation that's when I find it most often happens for me when you're in a worship situation and you're listening to the music and something just speaks to you and you just you kind of lose yourself a bit in it um, it's no longer me singing and I'm very conscious about how I'm standing or who's next to me or whatever but it's just me and God and we, I'm praising him, I'm giving him glory and then suddenly it changes to oh, God, I just feel you I know you're here wow and words just become um, not enough there are no words for it and you're just in that presence um, I was um, one of the things he says in, about, in the book here is when we want to learn about God when we want to know more about him we study the Bible we read it detailed we use reference books we read other books about uh, the Bible or what God has to say to us and we really study deeply and that is deeply important don't get me wrong that is so important to know more about God to spend time digging deep into his word studying it really grasping it but when we want to listen to God sometimes it's better to meditate on the Bible meditate on his word and spending time being reflective in how you read the word how you internalize it how you when you read a Bible, notice what stands out for you. Notice what um, phrase or sentence that might have meaning to you and then turn it into a prayer of um, like, like the verses we were reading. Rejoice always. Pray, pray continually. Um, oh, sorry, I'm not very good at remembering Bible verses. Yeah, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If we use that as an example, it might be that, God, I rejoice in you, I just want to give you praise for who you are, what you are, have done for me, and how you just give all that I need to me, Lord. Lord, I pray that I will be continually growing in my relationship with you, that my prayer life will be an ongoing journey, and uh, Lord, I want to hear from you. I want to be in your presence. And as we read on, give thanks in all circumstances. Lord, thank you <laughs> for all that you have done. Um, Lord, I know this is your will for me, that I live a life that honors you, that gives you glory. And you can start taking the Bible verses and turn it into a prayer, a meditation, where you go deeper with it, but on an emotional level, not a... Um, theory, thought level. It's about using both sides of our brain, both the left and the right side, of the thinking and the feeling, the emotional side of it. And we connect deeper and closer with God when we do that. Um, so, I realise I've talked far longer than I thought I would. <laughs> um, but I want to encourage us to try that sort of meditative prayer if you're up for it. So what I want you to do is I want you to sit up right in your chairs with your feet flat on the ground I um, and sort of just roll your shoulders back a little bit so you're sitting in an alert, sensitive posture that is still comfortable and you can hold it so you're not rigid, you're still relaxed but you're alert and you're aware. If you feel comfortable to do so I want to encourage you to close your eyes but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, maybe just find a spot 
in the near distance and just focusing on that. So you're not looking around. Your eyes are sort of settled on one point so you don't get distracted by what's happening around you. And as you sit here, just breathe in. And as you breathe in, you say to yourself, My God and my all. My God and my all. Derek, could we have the music playing quietly whilst we do this? Um, Some people can find it difficult with the stillness, so sometimes music can be helpful. Instrumental music I would recommend to just keep the the noise around you um, less distracting. But I want to encourage you to just stay here for a moment. Sit here with your eyes closed and just breathing in, my God and my all. My God and my all. And I'm going to leave some time for doing that. And as I said, if you find your mind is wandering, that's okay. It happens. And notice what it's wandered to. Is it something you need to pray for quickly? Is it something you need to give thanks for? Is it something you need to leave in God's hands for the time being? And just do that and then come back to my God and my all. My God and my all. I'm going to leave you with that for a little bit. And as you sit here, you might start noticing, you might find get thoughts that you think, oh, where's that come from? Notice that. That might be God just whispering to you. We um, read in the Psalms that God tells us to be still and know that I am God. When we sit still, when we quiet ourselves, we are giving God a better chance to speak those words of encouragement to us or prompts or reminders or just whispers of love. And he might be using your thoughts, your conscious verbal thoughts, or he might be using an emotion or a sense of feeling. If that happens for you, just sit with that for a moment, ponder on it, reflect on it, bring it back to God and say, Lord, this is what I'm noticing, this is what I'm feeling. Is this from you? Is this what you want me to, to hear or to notice at this time? And he, and if it sort of stays with you, or it goes deeper with you, then probably, possibly it is from God. If it's something that flees again, then probably it's not. And if you're not sure, hold it up with what you know is true about God. Hold up with what you know from the Bible is true. Does that make sense? Does that seem like something God would say or do? And stay with that then. And if it doesn't, then disregard it and come back to the my God and my all. Um, But just sit with that for a moment. My God and my all. As you sit here, God 
lost that you are giving him time, that you are seeking his presence. He loves you for who you are. He loves that you want to spend time with him, that you want to be so intimate with him. I appreciate if you're not used to doing this, this can feel awkward and long. But if you want to do it at home, I want to encourage you to start small. Doing this for half an hour probably is too long if you've never done this before. Doing it for two minutes, three minutes, five minutes might be much more doable to start with. Um, but I want to encourage you to try this at home as well sometimes. Maybe put on some quiet music in the background um, and spend that time just being in God's presence. Letting him sort of whisper to you in that small voice. Um, a few weeks ago when uh, Phil was talking about Elijah and how God was um, meeting him at the cave when he, Elijah had just been had a really tough time. He was really down. He's, he was depressed. Um, he had no motivation and no oomph to go and do anything. And God sends first loud winds and storms and thunder and noise. But God wasn't in that. It wasn't until there was that small whisper. That was when God was speaking. That was when he gently met with Elijah in his challenges, in his depression, in his difficult time and said, Elijah, why are you here? What can I do for you? Where do you where are you? How can I meet with you here? And God wants us, encourage us to be still, to be close to him in the stillness, to be intimate with him in the stillness. Anything you want to add? Anything? <laughs> um, in that case, could we have the music playing for a little bit longer and then start the last song, please? Thank you. No, go for it.